Well, it looks like we've got about a 30 second delay here. Let's see if anybody's watching yet. YouTube seems to tell me that I'm alive. Uh, I'll wait till I start seeing something pop up in chat. It's going to take a little while. Not as popular as Rossman or such. But let's see what comes up first. Give a chance for everybody to come in. Hey DJ, well, welcome, first person making a comment. So it looks like we're on our way. turn up that was here the previous note. G'day Maxamps. So can you guys give me a test to tell me uh, how the audio is? Is the audio gain too high? Do I need to take it back down a bit? Kessler. Matthew, congratulations. You will be the very first person to have ever given me a super chat payment, so you should print that out. So that in the event that I get um, anywhere near the fame of anyone, you can say, I was the first. So well done. Okay, the audio is just fine. That's good. Okay. Thank you very much, Matthew. Let me just have my coffee to celebrate. Mm. I do have water as well. Hey, good day, Pianov. All right, I'll get started on this because it's currently quarter past 11 at night, Sunday, and uh, I'm pretty tired from last night. I don't know if any of you watched the video of me trying to fix that triple five two um, Asus, uh, sorry, Acer. I mean, it worked in the end, but uh, yeah, that took me till 2.30 in the morning. Uh, first, nah, sorry, hi hi, 217, you're definitely not the first. <laughs> Alright, so as it turns out with this um, Protec meter that I've been trying to do with the um, screen display, it was the PL2303 USB bridge chips that was screwing everything up. As soon as I plugged this thing into my uh, motherboard, some scrappy motherboard with a dedicated COM port, everything worked as it should. Um, let's see, I've just got to just realize I need to go turn on the meter. So I'll be right back. It's in the other room. This is all being done through Secure Shell over. Wi-Fi and or running in X on another machine. I'm just using my workstation as the dumb terminal, so to speak. So I'll go turn on the multimeter and we'll have a look at what's happening.
I see you guys have been watching the empty chair. Oh, my stream health's taking a dive. What's going on? Just drop that gain down a little bit. Close. I don't know why my stream health is showing up red. I'm not showing any drop frames. I'm only sitting on 37% CPU and I'm doing 2600 upload rate. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, how many views can an empty chair get? Yeah, at this point, 11. <laughs> I think Eli's got me there. All right, this meter is running. So, whoops, rotate this should. Okay, so you can see our these are our frames coming out of the meter and they are as they should be. I've knocked off the um, delimiters on either side. <coughs> Pardon me. So we are now at the point where we have to go through and decode this into usable information which is the fun part. Fortunately it's not so mind numbing. I'm glad I quit the other stream the other night because uh, I would have gone on forever not achieving anything because it just wasn't even good data. Good day seven. Uh, NetBSD. <laughs> yeah, you could do that with that net. Oh, good day eight. Fixing things. Oh, SDS, Jason. Oh, not sure. Yes, I know, Jason. You've actually got real work to do. Unlike me, I'm just sitting here stuffing around. All right, so. When we want to decode these, oh, I'm going to draw this because I'm a primitive person who still believes in pen and paper. Actually, I don't have to. I just realised I can pull up this. So what we're going to have is we've got all these segments, and this is what's been indicated whether they're um, active or not with all this data up here. So if we have a look, so you've got the 7B, 7G, 7C. If we go down here, you can see 7B, 7G, 7C, and all those sort of things. So, g'day, Meta Man. Oh, my. Well, it must be all to turn up. I guess I picked up reasonable time, considering America's pretty much waking up. Western Australia is half awake, Europe's awake, and it's just me that's about to go to sleep soon. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we'll notice that all of these digits, at least it is consistent, at least, um, oh crap, not these ones, oh yes they are, I wonder why main digit 5, main digit 1, 2, Three, four. Not sure why five said. I think it might be a half digit. That's right. Yes. Oh, well done, Jason. Got out of the uh, modelling of the shower. That's actually quite good. I thought when you first mentioned that, I thought you had to go to a baby shower, and I would have said, "Yeah, you need to find a way out of that." Rather watch YouTube videos too. Yeah. W. -S uh, 918, can you wrap and show the serial wrap? Yeah, I'll get to that in a second. Okay, well, let's go to the serial wrapper code then. Okay. Scroll down here. There's, other than opening it, which really is pretty standard for all, you can go anywhere on the internet and you'll see this sort of code. Uh, the board rate I've set up the top is 9600, 7 bits. Local just means that I ignore all um, all the control lines, things like X on, X off, CTRS, all that sort of stuff. It's just ignored. We're going to assume that everything behaves as it should. Um, but the decoding loop we have up here, hopefully the font size is big enough because I really don't want to make it any bigger. It's already big enough for me. All we're doing, we've just got an infinite loop here. We're reading one byte at a time out of it. Uh, if we get nothing, I just put it to sleep. Um, just put it to sleep for, a, this is 10 milliseconds. So it saves a bit of CPU. 
otherwise you will have um, CPU thrashing. It won't really be doing any work, but you will be just constantly spinning too fast and you'll see your CPU load goes to 100, but it's not really truly a 100% load, it's just, yeah, it's kind of like riding a bicycle on the lowest gear. Yeah, a bit pointless. Anyway, so we, if we do get a byte in, we have a look, if it's 5B, which is our start of frame, I um, set the data buffer index to zero to indicate we're at the start. Obviously the next one is if the frame is done, then I've got to put in the processing code here, which we're going to write tonight. Otherwise, if it's actually some of the data, we just, um, first thing we do is we flip the nibble, which is the last four bits. For some reason, this meter, I don't know why, it's got them backwards. So we flip that. And if it's um, the first half of the byte, or I should say the top four bits, we stick it in the top four. Uh, this is for the even, even? No. And uh, this one for the bottom four, we stick them down the bottom of the byte. That's because, oh good, glad it's um, full 1080p there for you, Jason. I'm used to see. Oh, you work at SBR. Oh, okay. What do you do there at SBR? These days, you know, people don't know, well, don't really pick up C too much anymore. Everyone goes C++ or Java or whatever. But I've always had an affinity for C. It's, um, it's light, it's clean. You really don't want to write big applications in it. But for this sort of thing, for data processing, filtering, all that sort of thing, it's great. Sunday for day coding. G'day Alex. Uh, where was I? Oh, and yeah, so that just packs the two nibbles or two half bytes into a single byte for us to process later. And this is the uh, just dumping it out to the terminal. And that's it. It just goes around and around and around until I hit control C and kill it. Yes, it's my new C922, the one I did the other uh, review on. I'm really, I'm really impressed with it. I'm only doing, uh, I think I'm only doing 800 pixel by 433 at the moment because obviously I don't need a huge amount for this corner screen. But it, uh, yeah, it does do full screen quite well. I think I need a bigger CPU for this though, because this G3420 will not cope trying to encode uh, full uh, video quality on the run like that. I probably need an i3 or an i5 at the very least, but I'm not going to bother buying one. I looked at the prices tonight, they're like 299 Australian dollars for an i5, and that's a fourth gen. Uh, it's not worth it. I might as well just get a latest one. Control integration on Gen 2 for robotics. Oh, cool, robotics. Yeah. Meta Man, yes, this is the audio. Uh, where's my Pepe? I don't have a Pepe. I don't know. How, I haven't picked a theme yet. It might be a crocodile or a snake around here. Or maybe my cat. One of my cats. Uh, what's the audio like for you, Meta Man? I mean, is it bad? I found it a little bit. Um, what do you call it, um, fractionally muffled, but then that's just my hearing issues. I don't have very good, I don't have very good uh, high pit, oh, sorry, sensitivity on, well, basically everything these days. Old age, combined with hereditary hearing loss. Uh, so well, this is really error prone as well. If there's dud data coming through, it will mangle it. It's very much a alpha quality bit of code that needs to have all the proper things added in before it goes into production. But it gets us where we want now. We can test what our data is doing and put it into the right places. So let's see, if the frame is done, we need to process it. So uh, let's see, and this is where this comes in. I'm going to fill out this function here, and then once that's decoded, I can then process it. So we go to decode rule LCD. Okay.
Dun, dun, dun. Hilarious, I can't even remember my own function names. I said you just played. Bit of room echo. Oh, yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. Um, <laughs> awkward Australian voice overlay. It's truth, yeah, mate. You have no idea, eh? I've got to go walking around town and sound like a genuine Aussie. Otherwise, they're going to beat the hell out of me. But I'd really prefer to sound a little bit more British and uh, South Australian. Room echo. I will go and steal Lewis's... Um, Hessian bag boxes on his walls, that will probably help. If I could, I'd open up the door, but then everyone else is going to come walking past and wondering what I'm doing. Uh, Alright, so we've got... Uh, the only trouble with these curly cables is they get sucked down behind this desk. Alright, yeah. Got my steam-powered screen up the keyboard. Very good for killing people too. Usually people who disagree with you on your indenting style, hit them over the head with this, problem solved. Alright. Um, <laughs> it's genuine IBM keyboard. I'm trying to think. I've forgotten what year this one is. Uh, it's a fairly new one. 1984. Yeah, it's a baby. And I've got crap stuck to the bottom of it. Secret letters. Killer koala, drop bear. That sounds like a very good idea. Um, we had some... Um, what did we have in last night? Uh, I can't think of the damn name of it now. Not a numbat. Um, crud. I can't think of my wildlife that came through the yard last night. But we get echidnas, we get bearded dragons, we get everything. Are right, you guys going to let me do this code? You'll have to excuse me if I sort of go a bit quiet for a bit while I try to write this code. So, in theory, I don't know why I've got code okay, so seven seg. This up, ah, right. Uh, so. <laughs> oh no, I do not need any LED cocks. Uh, 984 keyboard modern shit, yeah. <laughs> Did they get wombats here? No. Uh, I don't know. I think it's too hot up here. Certainly the ground's a bit rough for them. But uh, wallabies, wallaroos, koalas, snakes, buttload of snakes, no, cockatoos. Um, I'm trying to think. Numbats? No, not numbats. Echidnas. The dogs, I don't have any dogs, but the neighbours, pretty much everybody around here has dogs. Um, and you can tell if an echidna has gone into their yard. Oh, we get possums as well. Uh, they look nothing like opossums from the United States or anything. Our possums are actually cute. Uh, but yeah, if the dogs have found an echidna in their yard, they just go absolutely insane because the echidna balls up and it's just this ball of spikes. Uh, but they're not detachable spikes like a... Uh, my brain's gone on me. Uh, what's the spiky creature that you guys have over in the States? Ah, uh, oh, crikey. Yeah, this is what uh, live streaming does to you. It completely wipes your brain out. Anyway, so the dogs go for the echidna, but they can't get it. You can't even actually pick them up very easily because they're like those um, slinky balls or something like that. As soon as you grab onto them, they shift their weight and they just spill right out of your hands. It's a, you need sort of like a bag or a double scoop to get them. And the dogs, it sends them mad because they can't get into them. But, uh, so you usually have to race over to the neighbours at 2 o'clock in the morning and get the dogs off. Do, do, do. 
All right, let's try and write this code. I'm just going to break this uh, manual out of my thing here. This is one thing I do like about Fluxbox is that I can stack my windows all together like this as a group and then break them out if I need to. Ah, the joys. Oh yeah, let's bring that up, let's bring that up. See this? You see that? That just scrolled on its own. I don't know what it is. It's only on this PDF. It's like possessed. Hedgehog. Is it? Yes. Porcupine. Porcupine. That's the one. Hello, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that. Yes. Porcupine. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so with this decode seven seg thing, it's going to, we're going to input uh, a single byte and it's going to be consisted of all these segments and then we're going to have to turn it into a, uh, a numerical digit. So, oops, there we go. Uh, we're going to have to end up creating all the different combinations. So, we go, um, switch, s, Yeah, Wallaroos, I tell you, man, man, if you have a look at them, uh, they are, they're kind of like, not really dwarves, but they are solid beasts. You don't want to run your car into one of them, they'll just bust your car up. Uh, it's kind of like you took a Western Australian big red kangaroo, the one you usually see on videos and whatnot, and you sort of pack them in a bit tighter. The monstrous beasts, they, they really, they get you in a headlock, it's it, your, your history. Um, okay, I want to do this in binary. So the theory here <clears throat> will actually go by the digits ourselves and generate rather than trying to work backwards from this. Um, so if you want the digit zero, you're going to want A, B, C, D, E, F. And if we go up here, that would mean uh, this is going to really hurt my brain. Okay, we want B, we don't want G, we want C, we don't want the decimal point, we do want A, we do want F, and we do want E, and we do want T. And that's it, and that's how we're going to go through and do all this. First CID, not being progress and putts like that. Alright, we'll see you in a bit, Lynn. Enjoy the coffee, I just, I just had mine. I have about three of these a day. They're mocha pot off the stove, so you know those silver two-part aluminium things. Um, yeah, I have about three of those a day. Keeps me alive. But now I've actually got to have some water. I'm drying out. CID chasing capsicum. Uh, what? Capsicum? I can't pronounce that. My brain's not there. What's um, what's CID? Enlighten me. Alex, Mia cats know that we do have a cat called Mia, who's a ginger long haired cat, and she stands up and does that whole thing like that. So, yeah, that was an appropriate, that's the closest thing we've got to a Mia cat. And I, why didn't anyone tell me my colon was not supposed to be there? I do not have my. Because I'm editing this on the remote machine, which funnily enough is running off a USB stick, this is all booted off a USB stick, um, I don't have my normal C syntax. Oh, caller cool ID. Oh, of course. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> right. Yes. Half tempters. This is where design decisions come in. We'll just say ah. Oh. I know that's redundant. And I know this is 
ugly compact code. Coffee keeps us awake enough to code, and we come back after and go, please say I'll comment with this, because <laughs> uh, Why not table to, why not use a table to decode this map? Well, you see DJ, I mean, that's one of those coding things, it's like, do I use a table, do I use an array index, do I use a forward or backward index, like just a table 256 to handle all the possible combinations, considering that it's only you know, 256 bytes of RAM, and in the end, it's like, take a pick. Uh, I'm going to do it this way, uh, but I agree, I mean, there's so many different ways, and no doubt, you can argue to the end of the time as to which way to go. I'm just choosing to go this way, because there's going to be a few quirks in here which may not um, cleanly map to an array table. Especially when I'm just blindly doing this. Okay, well, our next uh, one is number one. Jeez, this is going to take me a while, which is just BNC. Which is bits two and three. Oh, I hate not having my normal thing. Yeah, that's the trouble. It's I, I agree. I mean, that's what I was saying. You really... There's going to be at least three, four different ways of doing this. Um, pick one, go with it. I think invariably two weeks down the... Or even a couple of hours after I do this, I'll probably go, Ah, I should have done it a different way. At least I figure once I get one way down, I'm on my way, I can sort of work out what else I'm going to encounter later. There's going to be perhaps problems that I haven't foreseen. And at least once I've mapped out these values, it's going to be easy to shift them back and forth between the different methods. I could do this in hex, but I'm too lazy. I'm going to do it in binary. As far as I know, it's actually not standard in a climature to use binary in C, but uh, the GCC handles it, so I'm a bit fine with that. I'll change it to binary later if you like, or if someone complains. <laughs> uh, two, my god, this is so slow. I can see why, I see why programmers don't stream very often. What am I up to? 23 people! Holy crap! Obviously a quiet Sunday around the world. Mine's almost finished. Two, I'm going to need A, B, D, E, G. A, B, D, E, G. Almost sounds like I'm writing music. <clears throat> Excuse me. A, B, D, E, G. Okay. One, one, zero, zero. Oh, get a Dota 2. I haven't seen you for a while. I normally bump into your Lewis's streams. Uh, this is in C. Good old fashioned boring C, and I am probably mishmashing so many different C standards that uh, it's not funny. I have regularly had people curse at me for mixing up all my different ANSI standards. C99. Yeah, uh, DJ, I use it a lot for when I'm doing my Atmel coding, my microcontroller coding, so yeah, I'm not giving it up. It's far too convenient to have to give up. So yes, thank you for putting that out, thank you. So I do a lot of these things, but I'm not too much into going through the standards and like picking exactly, being pedantic about that. It's like, it works great, get on with things. How are you doing? If you hit special conditions, you have to start at the state machine. What's your standards? <laughs> Very good point there, Rob. 
the standard that compiles. If it compiles, ship it. And we'll call that version 1. Loom. Loom 23? Hmm. Yeah. Too many programs I've compiled and shipped. Yeah. They worked. Okay, we're only up to three. We're really sucking at this. Come on, three. Three is A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. G. I should have known that. Okay, one, 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 zero, one. I don't know how Lewis can handle 1,200 people on live stream, do his work, and keep up. That's pretty bloody phenomenal. I'll tell you what sort of C code I really hate are uh, the ones where people pack in multiple... Um, oh, what am I... Oh, the words are just defeating me at the moment. Uh, basically, they pack multiple different things all into the one line. Like, up here is sort of... It's not a bad, bad one. This is... I quite like this particular facility to be able to have your if-else-then uh, combination all packed in. Very useful for when you're trying to compose a string to dump out without having to have all temporary variables everywhere. It's extremely good. Uh, the fact that... Um, Python didn't have this originally. I think it's got it now. Uh, pretty much wiped me out from bothering with Python and the fact that they use active white space. And yeah, I'm not a big fan of the whole active white space thing. I know if you're trained into it and you use, you know, if you do it right, it's great. I mean, it stops everyone from having varying code um, styles, but. Yeah, I guess I haven't found a big compelling reason to switch over to Python for anything at this point. Most of my work is all stuff that falls into the domain of being written in C. For my web pages, it's PHP or just HTML and CSS uh, on that bash script. So I'm fine. Bitch. Yeah, XKCD standards. <laughs> I use that um, XKCD thing quite a lot to people. What well, compiler? It's just, um, that's a good question. GCC. There you go. Uh, what is it? 630, whatever it comes with. I tend, I very rarely run into problems with compilers being too old for the sort of code I write. As a rule, I tend to write very. Um, open kind of code, code that doesn't demand a lot from the compiler in terms of specifics, although I will say, of course, um, yeah, my bit masking stuff, I'm demanding that. Uh, oh, sweet, Bridget, that's almost, DJ, that's almost looking like Lisp. I hate Lisp. Jason, the thing I think with this uh, Protec meter is I don't think they actually did any real work to dump it out. That's the whole thing. I think this is actually using um, a 4-bit nibble um, data line to the LCD panel and that's it. And they, just, they just pump it in. It probably goes into some shift register that loads off onto the various um, segments and that's it. So all they've done for the serial is just done a copy of whatever goes over that uh, shift register. I don't think they did any real hard work at all. <laughs> That's my theory. Stupid one lines in part. Oh, Pearl. Oh, yeah. I bought um, a Pearl book from O'Reilly. This would have been back in 2001 or so. Well, actually 2000. And I tried many times to try and learn Pearl. And even though it's not that dissimilar in many ways to see for, you know, for structures and whatnot, it would never stick. It would never stick. I tried three, four times, and in the end I used that book as a um, doorstop 
that was the most useful it was for me as a doorstop. And as it is, once Pearl got to version 5, I think Larry just mangled her. Uh, I don't really have a strong opinion. I'm not excessive, uh, exceptionally well versed in Pearl. But from what I could see, it seems like he killed the popularity off with whatever he did going from version 4 to 5. Emacs and Lisp, oh my god, DJ how old are you, you're like 55 or something like that and grew up at university, maybe you're born in the dark depths of some administrator's dungeon. I don't run into many people who like Lisp and Emacs and all that sort of stuff, so I'm guessing you've probably got a very long beard. C sharp, that's another one. I haven't tried C sharp, but what the bits of code I have seen, it seems quite nice. Uh, the downside, of course, is that you know it's a Microsoft or well, was a Microsoft language, so I'm a little leery of that. I've been burnt several times by Microsoft in the last three decades. I don't really care to be burnt too much more by them. Uh, I will gladly take money off people to fix their Windows machines. Um, I spent a day trying to sort out a broken. Vista machine, I think, I did a video on it the other day, um, oh, I was the one with the great big chunk of lint in it, yeah, that was supposed to finish up a couple of hours afterwards, but there was a fault in the windows and it would not let me go up to service pack one, it was an original Vista, no service packs, it wouldn't let me get up to service pack one, it took me a day to sort that one out, and then I had to jump up to service pack two and then all the other updates. Oh, hi Elf. Elf beer. Beer. Yeah. yeah, I bought, I think I bought Perl, I bought JavaScript, but Senmail. Now, I don't know how many of you know, uh, have ever worked with Senmail, uh, M4 files. Uh, it was probably about 97, 98. I did a lot of work with Senmail. If you know the, what is it? Uh, you probably know, if you've done email filtering, you probably know aim of this. Um, that came out, and then I wrote a very similar program called Inflex. Um, the difference with Inflex was that it actually allowed you to have bi-directional filtering, whereas aim of this originally was only inward, inbound filtering. But I had to produce it for outward bound, and I created this rule set, uh, R0 rule set, and it was a surprisingly easy tweak to make Sendmail do what it really didn't want to do and from that I started writing a lot of email related software like uh, Ripmime, Ultimime, Examime, um, all to do with email filtering back in the so like first decade of 2000. I don't do much with it anymore but the programs are still used all the time. I probably see about four or five hundred downloads a day on the website. Uh, it's just one of those old projects, I think it's getting on 20 years old now, can't believe it. Alright, we better get to number four. Ooh, similar. Ooh. Uh, wasn't similar the precursor to... It wasn't precursor to Pascal, because that was... Um, oh. Yeah, what came out of similar? I, I, was, I keep thinking Pascal, but I'm pretty sure it was something else that uh, predated Pascal. And it wasn't Ada. Ada was similar to Pascal, but not the same. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, okay, Stray. Uh, what's wrong with your 552? Now, I tried Emacs for a while, but I couldn't find a good text editor in it, so I started using Vim. And uh, now we need four. Four is BCGF. BCGF. I can't write. The same downside of doing everything on the computer is after a while you forget how to write. One. Zero one zero zero GF. What? B 
BG. BG is staying alive. Uh, say F. Oops. Do you do a lot of QT work, DJ? Um, I really liked QT. I think of all the Linux or open source type toolkits for GUI, uh, QT has always impressed me. The downside, of course, was that it needed uh, C++ or object oriented. And of course, me with my preference of C, I was stuck with things like GDK, which I found GDK to be a bit hack, a bit of a hack the whole way through. Whereas QT was very clean, I found. Um, open board view is done in a thing called ImGUI, which sits on top of SDL. It's not the greatest, but in terms of writing programs like op uh, Open Board View. It uh, does its job, so you know, it's a pretty good thing. And Sinclair ZX81, yeah, it's roughly about when I got started. Um, here in Australia, there was a thing called a VZ200 and then a VZ300, and they were clones of, I think I was sold as Laser2000 or something elsewhere. Same idea, the you know, Z80 with a couple of K RAM console, you know, plug your TV in. Those horrible rubber keyboards that uh, they were fun in the sense they had overloaded functions per key, so you had you know quick way of writing out your basic GW basic words. Fortran, oh, Fortran seventy seven. Uh, Pascal, I did a lot of work in. Uh, my first commercial programs were written in Pascal, uh, specifically Borland Pascal. I started out with Turbo Pascal 4, that's when I sort of really got into programming. But it wasn't until Borland 7 came out that I thought, yeah, I can really go commercial here with the 64K um, barrier issue removed. And then, of course, that uh, uh, Turbo Vision, the text mode console uh, windowing unit. With that, I must have produced a bunch of custom commercial programs and I really enjoyed that. I produced a thing called, I can't remember, I think Aerofoil Vision or whatever and it was for designing airfoils for aircraft and things like that. I don't know what I've done with that. That code's around somewhere still but uh, long since dead. The only thing I didn't like about Pascal was after going to see it was it's just so wordy. Uh, yeah. Uh, go to G GTK Glide. I haven't tried GTK. Blah, 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 GTK Glide. Might have a look at a window. All right, I uh, need to get number five down here. God, you guys are terrible for productivity here. I'm destroying me. Um, there go. A C D C. <laughs> A C D <laughs> Thunderstruck A C D G F A F G C D uh, Keyboard shortcuts commonly used phrase the the Vim program will give me the um, like I can hit Control P and yeah you know, it'll give me like um, code Control P <coughs> and it gives me all those sort of options. I usually don't use it that much. I probably should, but I find if I'm just writing some sort of program from scratch. I tend to stumble more than not.
Yeah, Lynn, uh, about what sort of year was that with regards to your pascalancy? Because I found it wasn't until around about 96, uh, no, actually, no, about 93, that C was really usable on DOS and things like that, and that was with Ball and C. Prior to that, you know, I was all Pascal, um, but of course being at university pushed me into um, C more than not. <laughs> Good on you, Rob. Yep. Uh, stuck on the railroad track. Yeah, I'm not going to try sing. That's one thing I'm very bad at. It. Uh, let's see. B is a no. G is a yes. C is a yes. No decimal point. A, that's a yes. F, that's a yes. No E. D is yes. Yep, that's right. Evany Popov. Oh man, I'm going to totally stuff up writing your name there. Saying your name rather. Uh, six. What's going on? Yeah, I, I'm kind of embarrassed. I really should know these segment code sequences just off by heart. A, F, G, A, F, G, E, D, C, E, D, C. Oh, for goodness sake, I need that. Come back here. I should just split the screen like that. No, perfect. Uh, zero for B, G we need, C we need, decimal point we don't need, A we need, F we need, E we need, E we need, D. No, of course, I'm an idiot. Six is basically eight with one tiny piece missing. What the? How many of you are shouting out to me? I'll find out in a second. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Very good, Rob. And <laughs> hi, hi. Uh, that's why I went back and I was like, huh? I will probably have more errors in this code than anything else. All thanks to loving YouTube Live. <laughs> A, B, C. Oh, finally. An easy one. I should just split this open, but now we'll. One, zero, one, one, three. Oh, anyone want to guess um, what eight's going to be? C on deck me, CPM micro is even Osborne. Yeah. Yeah, I never got into the decks or the CPM machines. I sort of uh, missed all that. Um, I was a little late coming off the Z80s. And then I got my XT. And the XT, I sort of spent a bit too much time on GW Basic there. And then I went to the Turbo Pascal. A uh, case of exposure, money, things like that. One of the weird memories I have from back then is uh, being on Fido, net, the BBS systems and whatnot. And I remember them doing all the discussions for the PNG standard back then. So it was a bit of a weird thing to think I was reading that stuff. Okay, number eight, which is obviously every segment. One, two, three, not one, two, three, four. Just the same as A, but missing segment E. Marvelous. Right, well, that um, basically completely took forever. Thank you very much.
That should really... How am I going to do the decimal points in this? Now, the decimal points I will do as a separate filtering. Um, yeah. So there's going to be a fair bit of overlap, but I want to um, separate out the different functions. It's not like we've got a performance issue here. I mean, this thing could run a billion times in a second, and it, it's not going to be an issue. I've been going for an hour almost, and all I've done is this. I'm disappointed in myself. I kind of want to test this now, just to see what I can come up with out of the data. Yeah, I agree, Jason. I mean, I know a lot of people are very nostalgic about the things in the old days, the old days, but hell no, I'm not going back to that. I do not want to go back to that crap. I like my big screens, I like my powerful computers. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> if I want to have that nostalgia, I'll um, go outside and look at the real world. It's a new day, is it? It is. Thank you very much. Yes, Monday morning. Yeah, I'm at work early. All right. So how am I going to test this? What I need to do is, once my frame's loaded up, I decode raw LCDs. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Options, options. Good old classic index. <laughs> oh, hang on, wait, no, there's only 20 odd. And I can't do it this way. Nope. I can't do this as a loop. Well, I could, but it's not. I'm going to have to do more. Oops. I'm going to have to do more of this sort of manual chomping it out. Uh, so, so L look at my structure here L digits and sub digits digits and sub digits right it will love how I can't remember my own code Budapest, Wrath, oh, is the Y silent on that, or is it some sort of interesting sort of subtlety in there? Okay, big digit one is... Oh man, I wish I had an index here. Uh, so not, not one, two, three. I'm an idiot. I can just look at the thing here. Okay, so 96. 12th byte. So 11. So, mm -hmm. Where am I storing this? Frame. <laughs> Good on you, DJ. You're yelling at me now already. Wait till I'm finished the alpha version, then we'll go back and see if it. Yeah. Maybe I'm just a masochist. I did get a sorry, water on my lip. I did get an award at university for being masochist of the year because we had a uh, this is third year university, and I was doing computer graphics as one of my main subjects. Uh, 
and this was back with big X terminals, we're talking 20 inch grayscale things, uh, which were very beautiful monitors, I will point out. I've never seen anything of the same pitch quality as what those things have. <clears throat> Pardon me. Anyway, we had uh, to write in C based on this toolkit called Spigs or something like that. I'm pretty sure it was Spigs. Uh, we had to produce a program that imported 3D data of a teapot and then render it in 3D with Fong or garage shading, being able to rotate it, all that sort of stuff. And in the end, the class revolted and said, it's too much work. And I didn't attend that particular lecture. I was too busy off coding. Uh, so I handed in the full project and they're like, you're crazy. And I added things on top as well, just for extra bonus points. Um, so those sort of just basically considered me as a bit of a masochist for over going above and beyond way too much. On the upside, I did get a paid job in that department at the end of the year with the grads, even though I was only an undergrad at the time. Uh, is that vodka in that bottle? Yes, yeah, so I wish it was. No, it's good old plain water. Oh, the Welsh Cardiff variation. Let's cough that cough. <laughs> Australia, I've already called my mother, that was like seven, eight hours ago, at least maybe 12 actually. Yeah, it would have been 12 hours ago. Um, let's see, digit two is the previous part, so that's zero. Yeah, let's break it like this. Three, four. No, I'm going to have to do zero index. Zero, one. Where did my cursor go? Digit two. Well, it's actually digit three. This one's going to be a bit of a problem because it's a half digit, so I might leave that out for now. Well, ray tracing was fun, I enjoyed that. I mean, it chewed the hell out of your system. It took forever, even on those sort of mini frames or whatever they had running everything back there. But it was pretty. They seem to do a lot faster these days. I sort of left the graphics world a while ago, so I think they do it all ray casting now or something. I don't know, what's the latest technique they use? I need to go and look at the um, latest SIGGRAPH release. I see they've got some really impressive stuff this year. Uh, okay, I am going to. Just leave that as is, and I want to see if it really will dump out anything meaningful. It should all be zeros. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to bother with that. It's all very long-winded, but uh, as my programming style goes, I do tend to prefer to hash out the first version long-winded and then optimize from there. I find if I prematurely optimize it, uh, more often than not, bites me in the ass. 
Who knows if this will compile? No. New, 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 compound. Used but not. It is that, yeah, that makes sense. Frame under. Oh. It's not enough there to do a search replace. Please don't tell me I've got a double D reference that. This is equivalent to not using your brain when um, trying to. 96. When trying to fix a board. This is just a case of I will now. Let's see. Uh, go on and blindly change things and hope that I stop the compiler from complaining. <laughs> uh, unused variable. Oh man, I'm really getting sick of these new, overly helpful compilers. I've got a problem in open board view in one spot where I, for some reason I need to, want to keep a variable in there, but the damn compiler won't let me do it, uh, use it, uh, compile it, because it says you're not using the result of it, or the value rather. I was like, yeah, but I want it there. And I said, no, 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 I'm going to give you a big fat warning for that. L undeclared, or this is driving me up though. That's because it should be S. R S. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Ta! Ah, compiled. We can ship it now. <laughs> Alright, let's see if this even runs. Um, I don't know what I'm going to get when I run this. Marvelous segmentation fault. This is what I get for being a bit slack. We don't need that data dump. Rosin, you mean like when you just sort of go over and hack change things to stop the compiler complaining? And then go back and sort of think, oh, I think that works. I think since it compiled, uh, complained about the uh, the um, dereferencer, I'll use the pointer dereference and yep, it stopped the compiler complaining, so it's all good. Alright, now the fun bit. 
<laughs> Estre oh no, not Estres. Um, what I prefer, in a serious note, what I prefer is actually Valgrind. So, at so, come on, at install Valgrind. Yeah, the fan spin. Compiling is the fan spin. <laughs> well, probably perhaps the green light. We'll give it the green light so you get PP4 V2 or whatever it is. Okay. Valgrind has saved me a lot of time and literally a lot of money when I was um, producing and selling my commercial email filtering solutions. Uh, Valgrind found those bugs that I just couldn't it's uh, quite an impressive bit of software. Conditional jump depends on... I suppose I should put the compiler... At least I don't have any optimizations on there. Okay, one error. Move or jump depends on uninitialized values. Brilliant. Which one? <laughs> Casting error in F print. F, you could well be right. But they're supposed to be digits u and a. So that shouldn't be causing it. Oh, you're probably right. Okay, well, let's let's dereference that array. We'll just have it in locally. Digits. Ah, damn you. Starting to do silly things. Nip, nip, nip. Oh, yeah. Incompatible type. I've lost my nut here. Mm. I honestly thought I should. No, see this one. Uh, I'm looking really stupid here. Okay, I am going to bust this out to a global just so that I can sidestep these issues. And if you say I don't get no.
ink or give NX. Oh, I do love the repeat facility in the uh, BIM. Some of you may have noticed I haven't been on uh, Lewis's stream the last few days, even though you missed one. No, you're looking at Lewis when he asks that we... <laughs> like an audience input, please. Yeah. Um, and not really on Jess as much. Either. It's just, I really enjoy being on those streams and commenting and things like that. But I have... What the timing usually is, is first thing in the morning I get up, let the cats out into the enclosures, make my coffee, get dressed, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then their live stream starts. And that will usually be about 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock, depending. And that will carry me through to about midday if I'm not careful. And it's great, and I really enjoy it, but I'm not starting my working day until midday, and that's not good. I really haven't been getting things done, so I'm trying to have to go into um, rehab and go a bit cold turkey on them. Uh, I don't like going cold turkey. I do enjoy being participating. Uh, and I noticed the day or two that I have managed to stay away, my productivity has gone right up. Now, Stray, I haven't got a uh, MacBook or anything like that in my title, so that will probably prevent him from detecting that I'm existing right now. My chair is squeaking, I can just hear, hello? Look at that. Look at that. It's printing out a zero. That's brilliant. Brilliant, mate. Marvelous. And M-A-R-V-E-L-L-O-U-S. Australians will understand that one. I could do this a very disgustingly hackish way of printing all these one after the other, but again, I am trying to not be some sort of leet hacker and creating completely bullshit code for the sake of bullshit code. I hate those little hacker bastards. Uh, not so much what they're doing, I mean, I don't really agree with that anyway, but just the code they write is completely contrived. It's like, oh, give it a break. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, that theoretically I think is correct because um, they're my main digits and I haven't got any voltage being reading on that meter, so I'm going to go into the other room and, I don't know, stick my fingers on it or something. I need to go to iPad re- <laughs> I don't think that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, glad to know I'm not the only one who can't get work done. Okay, I'm going to go stick my fingers on there and hopefully it's going to come up with some new values. see any new values come up? Because I didn't. I am watching my own YouTube stream to see if... Uh, no, no, that's no good, no good. again. I don't want a line break. Who's producing the line break? Somebody in here is producing a line break. That is it. And 
and it's probably not flushing the buffer now because it's not producing a line break. There we go. No, just a little bit. Alright, I'll try again. Ah, oh, looks like we've got zeros everywhere. It's not quite what I wanted. Alright. So why do we have zeros everywhere? My decode. Even if I was decoding the wrong frames, it should give me something. What the... Struth. Linda that's... Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I um, guess you better send me an email with what features you want in it next. I'm planning on putting an Easter egg in there for Lewis. Maybe something that pops up Pepe or something. I don't know. That, yeah. Caught me a little off guard there. Wasn't expecting that. Thank you. Uh, what I might do is... Produce debugging out of this. Ah, uh, let's go that way. And I do need to get that microscope. Uh, it is at the point where I seriously have to look at perhaps um, somehow getting some funding like bank funding and whatnot because I've got a lot of jobs in the workshop that I could do but I just simply can't do okay everything's coming back zero <laughs> some wet food uh, I've got it on millivolts reading right now and it is right next to an open motherboard so it's picking up all sorts of things so I don't need to go back in there now alright we're getting zero why? why are we getting a switch S I'm gonna print what we're getting in for S to The boring part of coding, finding out what stupid, stupid things you've done. Well, according to that, we're not even getting anything in there at all. I wonder if I've got my buffers backwards here. No. I wonder if I'm filling it with the wrong stuff. This is up. No, no, no. Probably isn't it, but I'm still an idiot. I was right. I'm still an idiot. <laughs> you should sit down to make value. Yeah, it's a good idea actually. 
Oh, I can't though because it's um, an unsigned integer. Okay. Let's dump the hex on this. Code's going to start producing some real ugly stuff. So we're getting our frame. would show you the meter except it's about 20 meters on the other side of the house sort of thing. Uh, my nose is itching. Oh, it's like that, you know, uh, yeah, it's on the other side of the house and I'm just doing this through Wi-Fi because it's the only machine that I've got that has a dedicated COM port in it. And it's just a bare motherboard with a power supply and the multimeter plugged into it and the probe sticking up in the air like this. Okay. I'm doing something dumb somewhere. It's a standard policy. Where do you iterate on the frame part? Well, I was reading in the frames before, and that was coming up just fine, so I'm going to assume they're still fine, but I'm about to find out. I have a feeling that I'm clobbering the data in this section here. I'm overwriting it. It's, I'm uh, masking it in the wrong order or something. Hello. What's going on here? Where's my word buff? What's going on here? Any of you see that? That code, did I forget to write it? You guys notice that? There's no buff coming up out of there. I should be seeing the word buff here. <laughs> uh, no, I know what's wrong. All right, uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you um, 10 seconds maybe to work out what is wrong here. I know exactly what's wrong, at least at the moment. I'm curious to see if anyone else has noticed it. Am I working at Ubisoft? No, if I was working at Ubisoft, um, I would be programming this in um, Logo probably. Oh, uh, Punisher Beast, haven't seen you before. Uh, Alright, time's up. I'm not incrementing the index. The CAI value, this here, I'm not incrementing it. At least I'm pretty damn sure I'm not. See, I should be incrementing it. Um, yeah. Just up to here or something like that. Well, actually, no. At the end of this loop. Okay. 
Uh, so. uh, let's see how we go now. And the fun thing is, how much did I clobber while trying to... There we go. We're still not getting any digit outputs, but at least we've made progress. And I suspect that's because these were in the right order. Come on, give me something. Uh, Rob, it does get reset, I'm pretty sure, doesn't it? No, you're right, if I don't think it does. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, if it's frame out. If it, at the start of the frame it gets reset as opposed to the end. I know what now is the problem. Um, yeah. I need to mask these bits. So I need to go uh, S and equal Because that decimal place will be breaking things. Because it will even though it's zero here, it will influence. Oh, believe me, bro, don't be sorry about that. I mean I'm flying back and forth through the code, so it's hard to see. Okay, so I'm back to having broken things. Like I said, this is very much the brainless phase because it's late and I should be thinking about what I'm doing, but instead I am shuffling code around, which is a very good way of producing some incredibly complicated bugs. Nick, nick, nick. What's going on here? Jason, what are you doing sending me that sort of money? What am I going to do with this? Am I going to be um, by a microscope, I suppose? That's a good idea. Or if all of this fails, I might have to buy another multimeter. No, it'll be going to a microscope. Thank you. You need the same thing that just another couple of donations so that come up. Well, I'm only on uh, YouTube at the moment. Did I put... Oh, oh. Thank you very much, ASD, ASD. I don't know how... Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we're still not quite there yet, but we are making progress. Thank you very much. I would not have picked that. I would not have picked that for a long time. I would have gone around Mad Men for a couple of days. So I really appreciate that. Let's try this again. Oh, it's still not fun. Uh, what else? I need to clean up this debugging. It's uh, a little bit meaningless. Oh, okay. well, I don't know about you other coders, but um, 
I really can't live without a pen and paper when I'm doing coding. I will go, I will chew through these pads very quickly as I just write down random notes. I try to sort out things. Like right now, I'm going to double check. I'm, I'm sick of just flipping these back and forth. I want to make sure I'm doing it right. So, CAI zero. Zero mod two. Uh, let's have a look. Switch. Uh. I'm trying to read what you're posting and, and trying to understand at the same time. <laughs> the switch is never matching, so yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Um, I should really set that to R equals so. DJ, what do you mean that there's two bug bug? I might print these out in hex, uh, S and hex. We stop stepping into the code with buff, so that means that the if statement is also firing the else. Okay, let me just. I know what's missing here. Line numbers. I really should have done this on my main workstation. Right, the mod. Oh. Yeah. Um.
uh, the end of the frame is always um, there. Basically what happens is you will get, um, it's bracketed funnily enough, square brackets. So the first one is a square bracket open, it gives you the 42, uh, 41 bytes or 43? Where is it? Here we go. This is the protocol that they've got. <sighs> Yeah, the binary mask is not matching up. I'm really not sure. Um, I just I'm pumping these out because I want to see. Um, I need to get back to my pen and paper here. So basically, zero and one need to be paired, and their nibbles smooshed together, which I think might be the problem. So that would be. And then one. I have a feeling that's what I've got to write down on paper. I have a feeling this is overlapping in some way. I need to stop doing this divide by two and actually increment the index after. So I'm just going to do that and we'll eliminate one variable. Uh, child. Okay, I know that's not child. <laughs> So we should only increment it after we've added the second nibble. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm thinking as well, um, except I'm sort of bypassing that and just going straight to doing it this way. to reset this That's still failing all there, that's fine. I was wondering why it was all coming out like that, but then I remembered we've got um, set to 11. I might just eliminate that. We, we can safely assume at the moment if we're dumping zeros, then yeah.
And I think it's... I think it's getting a bit late and I'm starting to just do trash work at the moment. It's one of the things, you gotta learn when to just stop adding more bugs to your code and come back to it with fresh eyes in the morning. Yeah, exactly, sleep on it, I agree. Um, I'm being overwhelmed by all my debugging, I need to go back, clear all the debugging out, start out with known figures and see what's going on. I'm fairly sure I'm clobbering, I'm fairly sure the problem is with the uh, nibble assembly and I'm clobbering it somehow. It's an off by one type error, either by the index or something like that, which means I do want to try one little thing. Yes, it's not going to work, but I just so I can sleep. I'm just going to turn off as much of the debugging as I can now. numbers but I think that's probably I'm barely sure that's dud numbers fake because I can't imagine it's going to stay 80 the whole time I'll go put my fingers on it Oh, I did make a change, but it's not really what it should be. No. All right. Thank you, everybody. For I got a prickle in my foot. Uh, God damn it. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much, Lynn, and um, I think it was Matthew. I have to go back and have a look at those. Really appreciate everything. Sorry we didn't get the full result tonight, but uh, I might come back do the live stream in the morning or something like that so we'll see how we go the sad thing is even after i do all this <clears throat> pardon me and i get my terminal output it's only going to be for this one particular multimeter um and yeah just for me so i doubt there's many other people out there with this protect 608 that are going to need it for the same task that i'm doing but it's a bit of fun a bit of coding keeps the brain turning over stops it turning to rust uh, yeah. At least it's something different. Now I'll have a text terminal for my multimeter output and then I can just change the font of the terminal, make it uh, transparent as well without having to use OBS to do all that. Yes, some sleep. Thank you everybody. Uh, Lynn, DJ, really appreciate it. Yep, yeah. Elf, yeah, uh, I'm just going to scroll back and see. Chasing Caspian. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. All right. Thank you very much. I will. Um, oh, will it be useful if I set a time, or is it just easy enough for me to just start the stream and wait till people turn up? Can you link the data sheet? If you look for this Protex 608 manual PDF, it should come up in Google. Uh, there is a person who has done this in Java. And this is an old habit of mine, but I generally don't look at other people's code before doing my own. Not when I've already got this worked out like I have anyway. It's not a complicated situation. Primarily because most of the code I wrote, write is BSD or MIT type license. And as such, if I stumble across any GPL code or something like that, um, I've been burned legally in the past just by incidental type things. 
So these days I'm pretty paranoid about it and do everything clean room, black box type stuff. You'll get notifications. Good. Taint, change it to 8 buets. 8 buet? 8 bits? It is 8 bit. Yeah. Uh, you int 8. Amy, I see you've turned up and I'm just going away now. I'm sorry. I need to get some sleep, some beauty sleep, so I can wake up in the morning and harass um, Lewis or Jessa. <laughs> Alright, okay, I'm out of here. Thank you very much. It's uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. I need to finish up, do a couple of little jobs for preparation for tomorrow when the customers start turning up. Until then, have a good one. I'll see you next time. See ya. How do I turn this thing off? Oh yeah, no BS. Stop streaming.